Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, is a city of history, power, and world importance. It's where lawmakers, judges, and advocates address policies that affect the daily lives of all Americans. It is where, since 1936, the Baptist Joint Committee has waged its fight for religious liberty for all. From its current office, the Baptist Joint Committee organizes and implements a wide range of programs to advance its mission. Through its work, the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty has become a leading voice in Washington fighting for religious liberty and the separation of church and state. It brings the consistent perspective that church-state separation is the best means of ensuring religious liberty for all. The Baptist Joint Committee is true to its religious roots, informed by the historical experience of Baptists, and dedicated to promoting a vision of religious freedom that is essential for future generations. The Baptist Joint Committee is without question the most knowledgeable, professional organization dealing with religious liberty in the country. And the BJC is there. They watch it, they catch it, they sound the alarm, they notify people, and because they're sophisticated, I can trust them. Through education and advocacy, the BJC works to defend and extend religious liberty for all, not just Baptists. Staff members testify before Congress, submit friend of the court briefs to the Supreme Court, and provide commentary on church-state issues to the national media. Through a report from the Capitol and a regularly updated website and weblog, the Baptist Joint Committee delivers the latest news and analysis. The Baptist Joint Committee works with a range of religious and civil liberties groups to advance religious liberty and provides a unique voice as the only religious agency devoted solely to religious liberty and church-state separation. The Baptist Joint Committee serves as teacher, as mentor, as um, lawyer, as general counsel for all of us, and uh, we value that service very much. It enjoys a reputation as a trusted, reliable leader capable of bringing diverse groups together. It is a bridge builder supported by Baptists from various national, state, and regional bodies in the United States, and closely working with organizations and individuals from all religious traditions. We get our rights not from any act of concession on the part of government, but from the hand of God. That soul freedom that we all have, that God-infused liberty of conscience that we all enjoy simply because of the way, the way God has chosen to, to create us and to relate to us, is so very important. It's fundamental and it informs everything that we do. The Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty has been a proud defender of the First Amendment, which guarantees religious liberty is our first freedom. It sees that work as an essential American responsibility. There has to be a healthy distance between the institutions of religion and government, and neither should try to control or do the work of the other. The best thing for its part that government can do for religion is simply to leave it alone and sometimes to step in to enforce that civil insurance policy that our founders gave us in the First Amendment. Those 16 precious words, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Support for church-state separation has declined. The BJC is being called on to respond to a growing number of challenges. It must join with others to offer a vital alternative to those well-funded organizations that promote a false view of history, make misleading claims about the law, and perpetuate the notion that church-state separation is harmful. The need for a sensible voice and sound leadership has never been greater. The threats to religious liberty are many, and you see them every day. Attempts on the part of government to give uh, religious organizations money to finance their ministries to efforts on the part of public officials to uh, display and endorse a, a religious message to uh, attempts on the part of some to to uh, pass laws to allow churches to endorse candidates for office to uh, Supreme Court decisions that uh, refuse to accommodate the needs of, of free exercise all of these things and many many more tell me that religious liberty is in grave danger today I think we should apply the golden rule to church and state. I should not ask government to promote my religion if I don't want government to promote somebody else's religion. And I must insist that government not harm someone else's religion 
if I don't want government to harm my religion. To meet these challenges and increase its capacity, it has begun a campaign to raise funds to establish the Center for Religious Liberty on Capitol Hill. The Center for Religious Liberty will be a rallying point and will serve as a state-of-the-art training center for youth, students, church leaders, and others. It will expand and nurture relationships, engage individuals and entities, and provide space for visiting scholars from a setting just blocks from the Capitol, Supreme Court, and Library of Congress. A Center for Religious Liberty and a capital campaign to help pay for it are crucial to any effort on the part of the Baptist Joint Committee to thrive into the 21st century. We simply need a facility that is worthy of our potential to make a difference in the fight for religious liberty. Our rented space that we have now, been there some 40 years, is cramped, is antiquated, is inefficient, it's anonymous. The Center for Religious Liberty will provide a permanent nerve center and it will serve as a visible monument to the principle of religious liberty as the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty seeks to ensure our first freedom for future generations. The challenges we face are daunting, but no more so than our forebearers faced many years ago, and they fought those battles and won them. So we're going to get up every day and go to work and file briefs in the Supreme Court and pressure Congress and advocate in the agencies and interpret events for the media and educate Baptist in the pews across this country and engage those cultural forces that would diminish religious liberty and knock a hole in the wall of separation between church and state. I'm confident with our good friends, our supporters, our partners that we can win that fight and uphold that tradition of religious liberty that has been so precious to us for so long and ensure it for the generations to come.